guys, how's it going? I hope you're all doing really well. It's still pretty cold here. You can see behind me, we still have quite a bit of snow. We're supposed to get more tonight. It's currently 19 degrees outside. So we're actually gonna be working in the greenhouse. We're gonna be starting some lisianthus seeds, which will be planted out in the cut flower garden later this season. But I just wanted to show you what the current state of affairs was outside. <laughs> Let's head in. This is our setup right here, pretty simple. We've got our seed starting potting mix, vermiculite, we're gonna be starting six different varieties of Lysianthus today. So we've got Mariachi Pure White, Arena Red, Arena Apricot, Dublini Rose Pink, Arena Blue Piketty, and Voyage 2 Blue. And these are the trays we're gonna be starting them in. I'm gonna actually do them this way. Since we have six varieties, we'll do 24 cells of each variety and I'll just tag them right in the front here. So we've got two, trays that we're gonna be working on today. This is also the first time that I've been able to work in this greenhouse with the heater running. It's so comfortable, I might even need to take my coat off. Okay, got my coat off, I'm comfortable, ready to start this project. The first thing I wanted to talk about was timing of when you plant these seeds because it probably seems way too early. Uh, most of the time we're waiting until February and March to start things, but Lysianthus are a special type of flower. They take forever to grow. I have grown these for a couple of seasons, so I'm feeling more confident in how to get these to produce really well for us. Uh, I remember the first year I started them, it takes up to two weeks, maybe even a little bit longer to see them dry germinate and then once they germinate they just kind of stay the same size like the size of my pinky nail for weeks weeks and I was fertilizing and everything and I thought what am I doing wrong well it really wasn't until later on in the season until I planted them out in our garden that they actually started to take off and grow by the time I was ready to plant them out in May they were only about this big <laughs> So they're one of those things that you can't expect a ton out of them in their trays once you get them planted out they just explode. A couple of wonderful things about Lysianthus that makes them worth growing and really worth taking up space in trays for so long underneath your grow lights is that they're an amazing cut flower. They can last for over two weeks in a vase depending on when you cut their stems. Each stem produces a ton of flowers. They seem to not be bothered by a ton. There will be a couple of things I'll talk about in terms of insect pressure and how you water them that can make a difference, but they just are productive plants. I also like the fact that I'm starting them so early because it gives me something to do in the dead of winter that makes me happy. Uh, and also it's nice to have something going before the huge seed starting time starts, which is, uh, you know, February, March, we're gonna be starting so many things and it's nice to have something checked off the list early. One thing to keep in mind when you're picking out your varieties of Lysianthus to grow, there are four different groups of them based on when you harvest the flowers. So group one, two, three, and four, and it kind of goes spring, summer, fall, and winter. So group one is your spring harvest. They uh, thrive with moderate light and moderate heat. Your group two are your sum summer harvest. Um, those can do higher light, higher heat. And then group three, you're back down to moderate light and heat, and those are your fall harvest. And then group four is winter, which can do low light and low heat. I don't think I've got any that are in group four for winter harvest, but these should span from spring all the way till sometime in fall. We should have flower production throughout the whole season, which is really exciting. So now I'm just gonna get all of the soil prepared. I'm gonna be using, like I said, the seed starting mix, which is just a nice lofty blend of soil. It helps their roots, like enables their roots to really form nicely without having to work through too heavy a soil. And then these type of seeds need light in order to germinate. So today when I'm done planting them, I'm gonna take them right into our studio, put them under grow lights immediately, and that will help um, aid their germination. So that means you can either leave them pressed onto the top of the soil, just straight up like exposed to the light. You can also add a little layer of vermiculite right over the top of the seeds, which I'm gonna do today. This has been a game changer for me. Adding vermiculite onto the top, on top of most all my seed trays has helped with algae growth. It's helped retain moisture and or uh, help wick it away. It's just been, it's been an amazing tool. Uh, so I'll be using this after we get our seeds in. And I think all of my seeds are pelleted and I'll go over that in a minute. I'm gonna dump my soil right into this tray. We're gonna pre-moisten it, load it all into the trays, and then I'll show you the seeds. I think I'm gonna need more than that. Bag number two. This one was kind of frozen this morning. Woo! Oh, mercy, did I drop some? Nope. Oh, sweet. Hey, whatever I don't use out of this today, I actually have more water jugs for winter sewing that I will fill up. I'll blend some regular potty mix in with it. 
and use it that way. This chunk is frozen. We're shooting for a consistency of moist enough to hold together, but not so moist that water is going to be dripping out of your hand when you squeeze some of the soil. So let's get this mixed up. Okay, I think this is perfect. So when I take a handful, I can squeeze it. It holds together. And really there's a couple of drips coming out, but not much. And I prefer to do it in this tray if I'm doing uh, bigger projects because I can just take my seed tray, which I already have all of my little pots loaded up. So this is an 11 by 22 tray that holds 72 cells. I mean, you can get different size inserts, but I can just put it right on top of the soil and start filling it up. Contains my mess is so nice and the reason for pre-moistening your soil is that it uh, helps it pack into the containers easier so that you're not left with air pockets it also helps the seed stay in place after you've put it in uh, oftentimes if you have really dry puffy soil and you try to water it especially with a watering can after you're done uh, it takes a while for that water to soak down into the soil and sometimes it'll float and dislodge your seeds it can be a huge pain so you can see i got an initial layer in there and i'm just going to go along with my fingers and tamp it down and then I'll add a little bit more because some of them got filled really nice and some of them need a little bit more. I'm going to reinforce this table. <laughs> it's kind of wobbly. It's had a lot of years of use. Okay, I think that is looking perfect right there. Now we're gonna do the second tray. All right, you clear this off and clean my hands. A little, little chilly. <laughs> Yeah. First thing I'm going to do before I even plant any of the seeds is I'm going to put my identification tags in. So like I said, I'm going to do one row of each variety and that way I can't, hopefully I can't mess it up. This is Arena Apricot. We've got Arena Blue Picati. Dublini, oh, let me see, I've got another Arena. Arena Red. We'll put all the Arenas in the same category, which I think those are a group two. We've got Dublini Rose, which are our smaller uh, size flowers. Mariachi Pure White and Voyage Blue. Identification is pretty important. Unless you wanna start stuff and just throw it out in your garden, just willy-nilly, which is kind of fun too. We're gonna to start with the Arena Apricot, which I actually have the uh, Voyage 2 Champagne and I have Light Apricot as well. I'm not going to be planting those varieties this year because they all kind of have a very similar look and I wanted uh, six very kind of distinct, distinctly different looking flowers. I bought all pelleted seed this year. So when they come, they usually come in a little envelope, like a smaller envelope inside the envelope or in a little vial like this. It's just a really soft coating around the seed, which helps uh, you plant them easier. They're easier to handle. It makes them larger. Uh, the thing to know about pelleted seed though is that the shelf life is much shorter. Um, so you have like a year. You want to use them within a year, most mostly, so don't overbuy pelleted seeds. Uh, so like I said, these need light in order to germinate. So I'm going to pop two seeds per cell, and we're just going to press them into the top of the soil surface. We'll start back here, the back little cell here. Some guides will tell you just to do one seed per cell, which, you know, that's great, but I want to make sure that I get good germination so i will have to thin these later it's always kind of nice though because inevitably you end up with a cell that doesn't come up at all so if you've got two in another cell you can just kind of dig one out and put it in that empty cell it's nice too that they're pelleted especially when you get yellow pelleted seeds because then you can see exactly which ones you've already planted oh i got a few too many in that one that's okay we're gonna move on. Based on pictures, the apricot is my favorite, but it'll depend on how they grow. Sometimes different varieties grow better and all of a sudden one that does exceptionally well kind of rises up on my favorites list. Planting is the same for all of these, so let's just get through all of them and then I'll go over a few more details and things to watch out for. <music>
got all the seeds in and then I just used my fingertip to lightly press the seeds into the top of the soil surface, not burying it, but I just wanted to make sure there was good, good contact there. And then I put a fine layer of vermiculite down. Now, if you were to take a close look at these, you can still see the seeds. Uh, these happen to be all pelleted in yellow as opposed to white. So you can still see what's going on here. And I know that they're gonna get proper light in order to germinate, but the vermiculite will help out tremendously with moisture levels. So the next step is to take these into the studio. We maintain temperatures kind of like our house, like right around 70, give or take a little bit. These need between 70 and 75 to germinate. And then we're going to mist them with my water bottle just to make sure everything's settled in, but just very lightly. I'm gonna place uh, humidity domes over the top. That's not 100% necessary, especially with lisianthus. But I do find that because we're so dry here, it does help keep moisture levels up. You do wanna be very careful though with that. If there's a lot of condensation underneath the humidity dome with these, you wanna make sure to take it off. Make sure there's really good airflow because these tend to, as they're germinating, they can tend to damp off, which is a uh, kind of a soil borne fungus that can make your seedlings just all of a sudden, it looks like something pinches them right at the base where they're coming out of the soil and then they just flop over. Um, so you just want to be mindful of moisture levels with these so that you don't deal with that. So it'll take about 10 to 15 days for them to germinate. As soon as I see green in all the cells, the humidity domes will come off for good. I'm going to have a fan going nearby. Once they all have a pretty good set of leaves, I'm going to start letting the soil dry out just slightly between watering. They don't want to be super wet. In fact, that can cause issues. So you just want to be mindful of that. In fact, it actually takes your work down, workload down a little bit, the fact that they don't need to be so moist all the time. And then once they've put on a little bit more growth, we will probably at that point move them out here into this greenhouse, which we have heating now. It'll be warm enough by then, I think, to maintain about a 60 degree temperature in here, which is what they want to grow on even further. Um, I have grown them inside though just at the straight 70 and I had really good luck with that as well. I want to show you guys where these are going to end up so let's take them into the studio. Carefully. Here they are and here they will stay for the next several months, just soaking in the light. There is a window on the right, to the right of them, and then also to the left, which, you know, is kind of irrelevant when you have grow lights, but it's helpful that it's a bright spot. You can also see this is our supply area, along with Benjamin's Cozy Coop. This whole shelf is full of seeds. A lot of excitement yet to be had. So once you have your lisianthus planted, a few things to be mindful of to watch out for, which I've actually never experienced before with mine, but I haven't been growing mine for more than a few years, so I don't have a, like years and years of experience with them, are rosetting, which is a stress condition of a plant. So if these are subjected to temperatures over 85 for a prolonged amount of time, uh, like if I put them out in the greenhouse and the greenhouse heats up, which they tend to do, plastic covered greenhouses heat up really quickly. Um, that can stress the plant into creating a bunch of leaves around the base of the plant and not blooming. Uh, over or under watering can do that as well. So that might be one reason why I end up deciding to keep them in here, just because I've always had good luck keeping them inside as opposed to out there. Anyway, so it's just something to watch for. Uh, just don't stress the plants out. The other two things are fungal issues. Fusarium, which is uh, usually present presents itself as like brown or rust colored spots, um, usually due to high humidity. So that means your airflow isn't enough. You need to set up a fan closer or have it running more during the day. Uh, Botrytis is another one, which you'll maybe even see, they look similar. You might see spotting on the plant or you might um, see that the plant starts to wilt or it, the plant may have buds that never fully open but get kind of brown around the outside like they look old. Also, you wanna be mindful about how you're watering these. Uh, the leaves can stand a little bit of moisture or water hitting them, but the blooms cannot. They will show spotting. So, and I think that's why they've done so well for us because we're so dry here. We hardly get any rain in the summertime, so our blooms always look pretty clean. But if you are in a high rain area, that's something you might consider. Either grow the lighter colored flowers because they don't show the spotting is bad, the darker ones do, or grow them under cover. A lot of people will do them in uh, like hoop house type situations and you can create uh, little ones out in a row, like just a row's worth of a of hoop 
covered hoops that protect the plant from any kind of massive rainfall. Um, so don't water them from overhead. Do drip irrigation is the best and that's how we water ours. So the roots get water and the plant itself stays dry up above the soil surface. And that is gonna be it for today, you guys. So excited to have six new varieties of plants going in here. It's gonna get busy, I think, really quick, quicker than I think it is. This time of year, I'm always longing for more, more activity out here and just to be able to start it makes me feel good. Also, the other thing I forgot to mention with rosetting, so it can be high temperatures over or under watering or if the plant is root bound. And that's something I kind of wanted to address earlier and I totally forgot. So these cell packs are pretty, they're pretty deep and they grow so slowly that usually, and you can grow them in bigger cells if you want to so that you don't have to bump them up. I don't think I'm gonna have to. I'll be you know, mindful of it later on, probably end of March, sometime in April, I'll pop a few out of their cell packs just to see what they look like. Hopefully we don't have to go to the next step. We don't have to pot them up again before we're ready to plant them out. And that's why I typically grow in larger containers because I just want to eliminate that extra step. Uh, but anyway, that is something to keep in mind because a root bound plant can also cause the rosetting. Did I just say that? Anyway, uh, just any kind of stress on the plant. So. I'm just so excited to have six new varieties going in here. This time of year, I'm always feeling like, oh, I can't wait until, you know, this, this room is full of activity and I think we'll be there before we know it. It's gonna happen pretty fast, I think. And we're gonna have a lot of lisianthus, so six varieties, 24 of each, 144 plants if everything goes according to plan. That should be really fun. Also, all of mine, uh, I've got one group one, two group twos and three group threes. So I should have flowers from sometime in the spring all the way uh, through fall. We should have season long productivity out of these plants. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was helpful and we will see you in the next video. Bye. P.S. I didn't film it, but I did end up seeding with the extra soil that I had mixed up a whole flat of Southern Charm Verbascum. And this one grows two to three feet tall. Colors include creamy yellow, soft lavender, and peachy rose shades, perennial. And if we get them seeded early enough, it says on the other packet, if you get them seeded as early as January, you might see blooms the first year. So I'm hopeful. That's what's in this whole tray right here. Okay, bye. <laughs>